Okay, so this is what we have uh, in our uh, bank account ATM example. And again, this was to introduce students to the class and how to create a class. But now we can analyze it, and just that way we get one more chance to make sure that we uh, get experience with analyzing uh, class responsibilities, defining the class, and ultimately like making the code work, right? So what are we missing here? We have bank account, we have ATM. In terms of like modeling uh, the real world, what are we missing? Who owns the bank account? The card, the customer, right? The customer owns the bank account. So so the card is also missing, but we're not going to implement that piece, mainly because uh, we don't want to go through all that. Uh, like, it'll steer attention away from uh, objects, okay? But, yeah, the card would also be missing. Let me uh, go here. Let me bring up some example that I worked on last semester. I want to make sure that I have it here. Hmm. What is it? Again, uh, my thinking is it's easy to create one class, right? I mean, you can create one class, but like working with several classes is where you really uh, get a better understanding of object-oriented programming. So let me let's modify this one, and then next week we'll move on to another topic. Yeah, computer slow. Okay, good. I have it here. Let me. Uh... So we need we need a customer class. So we'll create a customer class. We'll create a customer class, but we'll make it easy. Like each each uh, customer will force them to have only two accounts, one checking and one saving. That's mainly to make this example a lot simpler than what it can get if we don't do that. Okay. I need to find a different video recording software. This one, like boxed on my computer. Okay, so our customer will force it to have uh, one checking and one savings. We're just going to force them to do that, okay? And then we uh, we have to do that. And our users, or not our users, are, this is not like this is not like the customer that comes to the ATM, okay? This is uh, in the database, right? In the database, a customer 
is still modeling like a customer, uh, a real life customer, but we're not, I'm not talking about the one that comes to the ATM, okay? I'm talking about the one we store in a database where we store their address and their name and stuff like that, okay? Let me see, what do we have here? At what point do you just make a new class for object rather than having it in main? Uh, class uh, for object rather than having it in main? I'm not sure I understand the question because we don't have any we don't have anything that represents uh, some kind of object in any of our mains, right? In in main for the ATM, uh, we just call the ATM class, and then in the shooter, we create the objects, right? In main, and then our program starts off. So we didn't create any objects modeling the real world in main. So uh, so we're not doing that. Maybe at what point do we determine we need an, a class? Is we, we do the analysis first, right? And then we identify objects. I purposely didn't uh, introduce customer in this example because I was focused on teaching students about the class structure. That, that was it, okay? So now we're coming back and we're like, hey, let's fix this stuff. So we have a list of accounts here. And then we have to give them a way of, a way of getting the account and we'll say get account. We'll say get account. And uh, which account? Well, they have to send us an index. It'll be either zero or one. And we can manage that, okay. 